Bulls. <laughs> ah, it's showtime. <laughs> Hello, it's Bill, the knee pain guru, and welcome to this week's episode of Ask Dr. Beck. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. Let's get that in there. Wait a minute. If we do that, then do we? Hold on a second. I guess we either get our names or we get to ask Dr. Beck URL. We don't get both. Okay, that's fine. There's no and on this one. Okay, let's, uh, how you doing today? Well, I'm, I think I'm all right, I, I think. Okay. <laughs> all our plants in the ground. We you already planted? Like 32 trees and... About 40 berry bushes and six rhubarb, and so they're all in the ground now. Nice. Yep. Right, do you have anything sprouting yet on the trees or in plants? Uh, we, got, we got leaves coming out. Yep, little leaf buds. And no big leaves yet, but, but we're on our way. Cool. Well, cool beans. Uh, how's the office coming along? What's been going on there? Uh, you know, the, the siding is almost on, but I think the guys, um, they either nicked or severed our internet cable yesterday. So halfway through the day, we lost internet, and I'm like, oh, they were working right in the place where the cable was. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, that means a technician is going to come out. So we don't have internet at the office now. Darn it. It makes running a business kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a couple people online here. If you have questions for Dr. Beck, please type those in the comments section. We'll answer those today. We have um, we the topic we're going to talk about today is lubric lubrication. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Uh, lack of knee lubrication. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, Ruben Norton writes, I injured my knee about a year ago and it is so painful now. I'm considering a knee replacement, but I would rather go with drinking more water. I drink beer. Is this hindering the lubrication of my knee? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a one word answer. Yes. Well, the beer does hinder lubrication. Now, here's a question for you. Because okay. the beer does dehydrate to some extent, the does, beer does counteracting it with twice as much water um, balance that out? Okay, so in theory, the answer is yes. Okay. And now we can now we can get into a discussion. Okay, great. So the first thing is we need to understand. Um, what beverages that we consume fall under the category of diuretics, meaning that they make you pee out more water than they give you. Okay. Okay. So coffee, decaf or caffeinated, it doesn't matter. Coffee itself. Okay. Um, alcohol mm -hmm. of any kind. Mm -hmm. Soda pop. Um, black tea. Okay. And believe it or not, hot chocolate. Okay. Really? They fall into the category of diuretics. Yeah, darn it about hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate, but yeah, no. you no, got to chase it. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I'm always going to thin slice this. Is it hot chocolate across the board? Is it rock cacao? Or is it like uh, ghetto, <laughs> ghetto hot chocolate? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> okay. So basically what happens is, and we'll take soda pop, for example. Um you, you drink, let's say, 20 ounces of soda pop makes you pee out 20 ounces plus of fluid. Okay. That's what a diuretic does. Okay. So net at the end of the day is you are now deficient even though you have consumed fluids. Okay. Okay. All right. And that water has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So... Um, in people who consume a fair amount of these diuretics, they wound up taking water that their body needs out of their digestive system. And then what happens is you'll wind up being um, predisposed to constipation. Got I don't it. have enough water to slide the, the poop out. Got it. 
So it wants to stay inside. Okay. When it comes to alcohol and joints, um, when you consume alcohol, it literally dries the fluid out of your joints, mm -hmm. which is why you wake up the next morning and your joints ache. Mm -hmm. Literally, the fluid that's in there is diminished in comparison to before you started drinking. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if we're talking about knee pain post-injury mm -hmm. and it feels dry and you consume alcohol and beer is alcohol, then you wind up with dehydrated joints. And, and we'll put a period at the end of that sentence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, optimal, if you're trying to avoid knee surgery, is cut out the alcohol. And on top of that, replace your fluids. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the bare minimum. But that still doesn't treat the injury. So then you find someone like myself or Bill or somebody else who knows about the mechanics of the knee and you get treated. And over the course of a few treatments, you see if you can't reverse the damage that's gone on in the knee. If you can reverse it with treatment, no big deal. If you can't reverse it with treatment, then you need to figure out what kind of adjuncts that we need to put in whether it's something like prolotherapy or whether it's a knee replacement, because in some cases that may be warranted and you get that fixed so that you can have your mobility back and continue to live your life. Got it. So what I hear you saying is switching the light beer won't cut it. Uh, correct. <laughs> beer over diuretic, just a little less alcohol. Okay. Qu question for you. What is the feeling the, the day after where you'll feel swollen and puffy. So there's a degree of inflammation going on and it feels like there's fluid in, in, in the body. Like um, if I have a couple too many glasses of wine, let's say. Yep. Yep. Um, what where, What is the difference between the hydration that you're referring to and the, the swelling inflammation that's fluid on some level. So can you use more words to make sure that I understand your question correctly? The so joint. what I heard, what I, what I heard me say is inside the joint, it dries out. Correct. Okay. What I'm hearing you say is it feels like it's swollen, but swollen mm -hmm. where? I got it. So it, the inside of the joint is dehydrated outside of the joint is so like the water isn't able to get in the joint and it's it, just, yeah, it takes out. time. It takes it's, time. So, yes. Yeah, so basically what we're talking about now is chemistry and diffusion across a gradient. Okay. Okay. So our, our diuretics take water out of us mm -hmm. and depending on what we take in, it's going to take water from more or less a specific source. Okay. Okay. So for example, if we consume um, a bulk forming laxative. Okay. Okay. So that would be like Metamucil, which is the husk of the psyllium seed. Mm -hmm. We take that psyllium seed husk and we dry it out. We dehydrated it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put it in water and we're going to consume it. And as it spends a little time in our body, it literally pulls water from all the tissue around it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to pull water out of our digestive system. Mm -hmm. Now, in relation, our digestive system is a little drier than it should be. And the body will put water back into the digestive system. Mm -hmm. but it takes a little bit of time. So same thing with your knee. If we're pulling water out of what effectively is the joint space, so we're mm -hmm. drying out the synovial fluid, body's going to go, oh, well, okay, we're dried it out. We need to put some fluid back in. But mm -hmm. it is like turning on a valve and 10 seconds later, it's back to normal. Mm -hmm. What we've got to do is we've got to pull water across the cells and get it back into equilibrium. And it takes time. Got so, it. The body will then say, oh, I need to put some water in the tissues around it. There's your swelling feeling. And then mm -hmm. over the course of a day or two, we go back to normal, mm -hmm. assuming that we're not continuing to drink. Yeah. 
so the the process of being able to dehydrate to the joint takes place much faster than the rehydration of the joint. Correct. Oh. That's, that's like I mean, it's the same way of saying an injury is usually instantaneous. Mm -hmm. Healing is not instantaneous. Healing takes time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. I got another question here. Okay. This is from Anne in the UK. Uh, she writes, Dr. Beck, um, let's see. I sent a message some months ago explaining that I hadn't felt right since my thyroid operation as the right one was cancerous in autumn of 2019. I also have osteoporosis in both knees and have been uh, working with my program for a few years, and which has been helping to keep the pain at bay. Uh, I haven't been getting the attention from my doctors um, due to COVID. I've been suffering from stress and anxiety. And there again, it has been months before I can speak to a counselor. This once again, UK, they have the specialized health care. Um, I saw my doctor on January 11th of this year. He prescribed an antidepressant tablet called Citalopram, 10 yeah. milligrams. I told him. I told him I wasn't depressed, just anxious with having to wait so long to see the specialist and a chronologist regarding the levoxetherin, levoxetherin, yeah, levothyroxin, uh, the thyroid medication. My it don't suits me as there's too many fillers in them. I reluctantly took the citalopram. Mm -hmm. After six days, I developed terrible pains in my knees and legs, a different pain in my usual knee pain. I stopped taking them as the doctor wanted to see me after two weeks. He asked how I had gone on with them, and I told him how bad it had been and wasn't taking any more. I was wondering whether the citalopram had clashed with the levoxetherin, but in the 11 weeks since I stopped taking them, my knees and legs have continued to be very painful. I have taken on some two, on some days, two paracetamol and one codeine, 30 milligrams, the latter prescribed after my operation to cope with the pain. Although I have osteoporosis in my knees, I do not want to go down the route of having knee replacements. Another problem I now have is also swollen left ankle, which is painful at times, with the swelling and pain going up to my knee. I would appreciate your comments, please. Isn't that a nightmare? Uh, okay. Yeah, Let, give me just a second here. Um, I am going to look up side effects of citalopram just to make sure that I am on the right page here. And while Dr. Beck is doing that research, if you have questions for him, please enter that in the live chat box or the comments section, and we will get to those today. For those that are watching the replay, you can also enter in your questions as we will address those oh, on future, um, future calls. Uh, the shows take place at 8.30 a.m. every Friday Eastern time. You can go to the camellafoundation.org for more information. Okay, got to love it. Got to love it. Okay, so now let's go through. So it, it's been a while since I've prescribed. We, we would know Citalopram as Celexa. Okay. Mm -hmm. It falls under the family of SSRI, which stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. Mm -hmm. So you got to break that apart. It's selective. It's basically focused on... Um, a neurotransmitter called serotonin. And the serotonin is basically our happy drug in the brain. Mm -hmm. And it inhibits the reuptake of serotonin. So without the drug, serotonin is made. Serotonin goes to its receptor, activates the receptor, and then serotonin gets taken back and recycled in order to be used again. The SSRI inhibits the reuptake of serotonin. It basically slows down the reuptake. 
and it gives us effectively more serotonin in the system. Mm -hmm. That's the idea behind the, the drug. And um, so it's supposed to make you happier because there's more of the serotonin floating around. Okay. That's the idea behind it. Okay. What I'm hearing with the anxiety, um, certainly in my practice, you wouldn't get an SSRI. We try to figure out what was going on underneath it and fix that problem. Mm -hmm. But in the traditional medical world, we give an SSRI and then we've ticked the box and we've said, oh, hey, yes, I've done something. Right. Okay. So I'm going to read through some of the side effects here. And then we can talk about what's happening and what may be happening in relationship to the knees. Mm -hmm. So diarrhea or constipation or vomiting. Okay. All of those are about fluid movement. Mm -hmm. um, increased sweating, increased thirst, frequent urination. Again, all about fluid movement. Mm -hmm. um, muscle or joint pain, which is about fluid movement, dry mouth. Uh, runny nose, fever, sweating, confusion, faster, regular heartbeats, severe muscle stiffness or twisting, agitation, hallucinations, loss of coordination, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, hives or blisters, rash, itching, uh, swelling of face, throat, tongue, lips, eyes, hands, feet, ankles, or lower legs. Again, all about fluid movement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nose bleeding um, and seizures. Okay, now that's not the inclusive list, but that is a place to start. And what you recognize is what they're really not telling you is that one of the things this drug can do is shift the fluid balance in your body. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Then the question becomes, is it temporary, as in only when we're taking the drugs? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that once we take the drugs, it can become permanent? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so... There's this thing called serotonin syndrome for some people who start off on an SSRI. It throws their body so out of balance that they can't come off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's one of the possible, and I'm not even going to call it a side effect. It's a possible effect of the drug. Mm -hmm. You go down this road thinking that it's temporary. It's going to help me through whatever I'm um, going through. And mm -hmm. you wind up needing to be on the drug forever just because of the way your body reacts to it. Okay, so all of that being said, now what we have before us is a patient who has taken a drug and post taking the drug has pain in specifically what she's describing is the knee joints, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe more, and she didn't put it in, but but specifically it's the knee joints. Right, so you mentioned the ankle, ankle as well. Okay, okay. So then the first thing that I think of is that, when we're dealing with the lower leg, mm -hmm. the knee functions from a lymphatic standpoint as an Archimedes screw. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for hundreds of years, the Archimedes screw was one of the most efficient ways of raising water from a lower level to a higher level. Okay. Invented by Archimedes, basically, it's more or less a wood screw in a tube that is only very slightly bigger than the wood screw. You stick it in the water, you start turning the screw, and it literally begins to lift water up the tube so that you can move it from a low level to a high level, from a river to a field, for example, okay? Mm. And the knee functions in a very similar manner. It's got a diaphragm that goes across it that basically is the meniscus, and as your body moves into the cranial rhythm, there you go. The one in the center looks really good. Yep, there you go. This one. Like That's how it works, right? It literally is just pumping fluid up against gravity. Mm -hmm. And that's what the knee does. Mm -hmm. So when I've got some dehydration or pain or swelling, First thing I think is, oh my goodness, the knee isn't working correctly. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is we get a fluid backup. Mm -hmm. Fluid backup can be visible. It can be actual swelling. Usually occurs in one leg versus both. Mm -hmm. um, or it can be joint pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that 
ankle and knee together, say, hey, we've got something going on at the knee and everything south of it, everything below is having a problem. Mm -hmm. So then what I would do is we need to, to first of all, get that knee assessed and mm -hmm. make sure that from a lymphatic viewpoint, the knee is moving correctly. Mm -hmm. And then while we're at it, we go down the rest of the leg and we make sure that we're getting fluid out. Once we get fluid out, that means we can get fluid in and we can exchange the fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the first thing that I would think of. From a medical standpoint, we also need to try to make sure that we don't have serotonin syndrome going on. Mm -hmm. And again, look at the whole person. Hey, how's your, how's your mood? How's the anxiety doing? And then there are, and we've talked about this on a couple of episodes, but um, my views on anxiety, and I'll give you the, the brief recap here just to make sure that we cover it. Our body was wired, and whoever the first proto-hominid was, at that point, we were already wired. Okay? Mm -hmm. We share this with the animals. So we have sympathetic nervous system. That's our fight, flight, or freeze. And we have parasympathetic nervous system. That's rest and digest. Mm -hmm. And if we look at our current society, rest and digest is something that theoretically, if you have enough money to go to a restaurant, you can do with friends. So you can sit around with friends, you can have a beer, you can have a meal, and you can rest and digest. Mm -hmm. okay? However, fight flight or freeze our current society gee gang we're uh looks like dr beck uh i'm still here okay got it so what happens is fight is out because if you fight with someone you tend to get arrested mm -hmm. flight is out because you look uh, a little crazy if um, anything, anytime anything gets rough, you run away. Mm -hmm. So society has kind of limited this to those two. So we can't use those. And then what happens is if you freeze, again, we look at you like, are you really okay? And we start to wonder. Mm -hmm. And so now all of the options that are hardwired for us to get out of this situation, to protect ourselves, are basically useless. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is your body freaks out and says, oh my God, I'm going to die. And there are no options for me. Mm -hmm. And So anxiety and panic attack is the next option for your body. Mm -hmm. So you breathe heavily, you start sweating, you know, you want to run away, you might faint. All mm -hmm. of those are pre-programmed responses to a situation which our body can't see another option for getting out of, okay? So we would wanna look at how can we instill better options or any options? Mm -hmm. And what is it that's triggering our body? How can we work with that, right? So we turn the volume down on the anxiety. Right. Um, but that doesn't necessarily help us with the knee pain that basically takes away the need for the SSRI. Mm -hmm. Um, and the knee pain is something that, again, finding someone like yourself or me or anybody who is versed in being able to treat the knee and the ankle, preferably while looking at the lymphatics, would be the option that I would suggest. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, what what would you point Anne to in, in regards to addressing the um, the Citalop? Pram situation. Yep. Because yep. they could. Pardon. What we just talked about. It, yeah. But I'm I'm seeing the conversation with her doctor. It. it oh. Like oh. It, it. It seems it to me. It doesn't seem like the doctors that she's seeing have the skill set to Correct. address the structural function of it. How would she approach? Yep. Uh, dressing this in oh. a bigger holistic approach with this doctor that doesn't have a holistic approach. Right. Okay. So I, I understand your question. And the first thing that I would say is, and, and this is, it doesn't matter who you see in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. 
each of us is giving you our professional opinion based upon how we've been taught. Right. That professional opinion may ring true with you or it may not. If it does not ring true, don't be afraid to voice your opinion and say either please give me another option or please give me someone's name who's trained differently than you so mm -hmm. I can get a different opinion, right? Yeah. Because ultimately it's your body that's receiving the care. So you got to feel comfortable with the people that you're working with. So what I would do based upon the question that you ask is, great, thanks for your opinion. Um, I'll take the script with me and I'll fill it if I feel like I need to. Mm -hmm. Okay. That way you're being very professional. And in your mind, you can think, oh, okay, I've got one opinion and then I want to find a different opinion or maybe three different opinions or 10 different opinions. It doesn't matter because one of them is going to ring true. Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. um, and it's, I'm going to say a shortcoming. I mean, being, being in the medical system, being an actual physician, having gone through medical school and then seeing patients for a number of years, you realize that in medical school, they teach you, they teach you a lot, but it's not comprehensive. It doesn't help you with all of your patients. Mm -hmm. And you start to see trends in patients and you start to see how the medical system may have small to gaping holes in how it helps or is set up to help people. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to anxiety, it's almost like we close our eyes as the medical system and we hold out a prescription to you and we go, here, I hope this helps because my skill set here is very limited. And if the medication doesn't help, I don't know what to do for you. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, from my side, it's sad. You know, being a physician, I've had to learn a whole lot more than what we were taught in that realm. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, that is another partial answer to your question. And then for me, when I look at what Anne is saying is when my nervous system gets overwhelmed, my body doesn't know how to cope and it freaks out. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I use for my patients is Bach flower essences. Ah, yes. And so um, they were founded by Edward Bach, spelled mm -hmm. um, just like the great composer. Mm -hmm. and they are flowers soaked in alcohol to remove the essence of the flower. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me to explain more than that because I don't understand how that works, but I'm going to take that at face value. Okay. Um, there are currently, I believe, 33 different essences, and mm -hmm. each essence is going to work with either an emotion or part of an emotion. There is one called rescue remedy mm -hmm. that is a blend of five essences. And basically what I do with folks is say, Hey, when your anxiety comes up, rescue remedy is the first thing you go for. Mm -hmm. first of all, it's not going to take away the anxiety. It's not mm -hmm. designed to do that. What it's going to do is turn the volume down so that it's easier to manage in the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the first place I start with people. Mm -hmm. When we turn the volume down, we can gather more information and hopefully get to the root of what's triggering it or causing it and then work on that. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a story about okay, talking to you. This was, this was a, where are we? 2020. This was like uh, 11 years ago, but I want to do the, uh, the promo video for the Camella foundation here. And then I'll be right back and I'll share that story with you. Our mission at the Camella Foundation is to relieve pain naturally using osteopathic healing principles. The Camella Foundation is recognized as a nonprofit 501c3 under the Internal Revenue Code. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. Please consider taking a moment and donating to the Camella Foundation to help us continue our important pain relieving work. Every little bit helps. Okay, so this was 2011-ish, 2012, somewhere, somewhere around in there, and um, I had 
uh, you you've been my doctor for a number of yeah it's been a while <laughs> over a decade We're not that old, I promise <laughs> uh, so I was going through a divorce at the time I don't know if you remember if I I called you one time and I was losing it like yep. I was like, oh my gosh it's the end of the world what am I going to do this is the first time ever in my life that I thought I needed antidepressants like. Yep. And for me to for me to get to that place is really, really intense. So I remember calling you and I was like, Charlie, I, da, 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 can you write me a prescription for something? You're like, okay, I'd be happy to do so, but I want you to do this first. And you told me this, that, that like I remember this, like it was yesterday. You said, do rescue remedy for two weeks. And then two weeks after that, if that's not working, if the rescue remedy isn't working, then we'll get you a more specific flower essence. And after a month, if that doesn't work, then I'll write you a prescription. And I never got past the rescue remedy. So just, yep. just a testament when you think your world is ending, like everything is going to hell in a handbasket, like rescue remedy is some pretty amazing stuff. Yep. So cool. I thank you for that. Yep. And I also look at it like how many other, if I would have went to just about anybody else, they would have been probably happy to write me the prescription. Sure. For antidepressants and then, sure. you know, who knows from there. Yep. But anyhow, that, that's so rescue remedy uh, as a, a, my own personal experience and testimony for it, because it, it significantly takes the edge off when things get, get, gets uh, nutty in life. Yep. Very good. So, um, so I yeah, hope so. I'm able to help you out and give you lots of information. Yeah. I think that's is a strategy for Anne. And I think when she has a, you know, some, some baby steps that she can take, she's, a great implementer. She Good. like takes the information and runs with it. Uh, she just needs a clear direction and yep. Go, yep. okay, this is what I do next. And then, you know, however this turns out, we can, we can take it from there. Yep. Cool. Uh, anything else? Anything else you want to cover, talk about? Um, pray for Ukraine. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, definitely the people. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, excellent. Well, uh, I think we're going to wrap up for today. Uh, if you're watching the replay, you would like to uh, type your question in the comments section. We will address those on future Ask Dr. Beck episodes. Um Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications for future videos as we do these once a week. And uh, make sure you go ahead and visit the Camella Foundation website. We've got a lot of great information over there to help you with pain. Okay. Charlie, thank you so much for your insight, your expertise, your knowledge, your wisdom. Thank you, Bill. Have a great day, and we will see everybody next week.